when we talk about you know, getting to Mars, how realistic do you think that is? There's a book that just came out, it was reviewed in the Wall Street Journal, talking about all of the various obstacles to human beings actually living on Mars. Like, we, we, we live in a pretty propitious place. I mean, the, yeah. the, the, the world we're, is a pretty wonderful planet. Here. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's so, well suited to us. Yeah, exactly. So what, what are the biggest obstacles? And what do you think the, the timeline is in terms of having a robust presence on other planets? Uh, well, I, we're hoping to uh, have the first uh, humans on the moon in less than five years. Um, Mars, maybe a little, a little longer than five years. I'd be surprised if we don't have humans on Mars uh, within 10 years. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And then we're going to aim to have a lot of humans and build a, a city on Mars and a base on the moon. I mean, how, how do we mobilize that many resources there that quickly? That's a, that's a lot of resources necessary. It's not like you can draw resources. from the environment. In, a, lot of, a lot of resources. Now, I should say, the, 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 in order to pass the firmly, firmly great filter um, of, of being a multi-planet species, the, 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 other, the second planet has to be self-sustaining. So that the acid test being that if, if the resupply ships stop from Earth stop coming for any reason whatsoever, it could be mundane or, or serious, uh, will Mars die out or not? So basically, Mars, Mars has to be completely self-sufficient um, in order to pass the Fermi Great Filter. Um, that, that, that particular Great Filter I'm talking about is if something calamitous happens to one planet, is, is, is humanity gone or not? And so how long will it take for that to be self-sustaining? When you say, you know, in 10 years people will be on Mars. Like 40, 40-ish years. So w one of the things I think that captures the imagination about what you're doing is that you're speaking in ambitious terms that people have not spoken in the West for solidly half a century. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really, so. it's, it's an amazing thing. I guess I, mean, I like, say it so often. I, I mean, it's a, you, you say this stuff because it's you all the time. Yeah. But the reality is that the last time people were talking about within a decade, we're going to have a man on the moon was JFK talking at the beginning of the 1960s. Yeah, 60, and it's been full on half a century since anybody talked like this. And I think people find it shocking. And I think maybe we should look at the other side of that, so both sides. One, what makes you different? And two, why do you think that dream went away? Why do you think it was that for half a century after we put a man on the moon, we just kind of receded back into, into whatever the hell was else going on? Yeah, um, that's a long story. But the, the follow-up to the shuttle, to, to, to the Saturn V was the space shuttle. Space shuttle could only go to low Earth orbit. Um, but the, the, and, and the aspiration was to make it reusable. But the, they unfortunately did not succeed in that, in that goal. Um, the space shuttle was so difficult to refurb that uh, it, it ended up costing as much as the Saturn V. And then the, the main, the primary structure of the, the space shuttle orbital system, that big orange tank, was, it's actually the primary airframe because it takes the load from the, the orbiter, the sort of air, airplane looking thing, and this, the side boosters. So you lose that every time. The side boosters uh, land in the ocean, um, and and they're solid rocket boosters, so that you know they have to get you back to the factory to get solid pro propellant loaded in. Cut a long story short, the cost per flight of the shuttle w uh, ended up being roughly the same as the, as a Saturn V expendable. Um, so, but the shuttle had about a quarter of the payload to orbit and could not reach the moon. So. You know, so noble ideas at the start, but ultimately it was it was not a good design. So, uh, and then the shuttle retired, obviously, and then uh, we we had nothing. That that curve isn't that's is not a good curve going from the moon to low Earth orbit to nothing. <laughs> so that does not extrapolate to being a multi-planet species. So. Uh, that's why I started SpaceX is to try to reverse that that trend and, and uh, get us back on to doing ex exciting things in space again. You know, uh, things that make people excited to get up in the morning and say, yes, humanity is going to do some amazing thing in space. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. And lift off. Go Falcon. Go 124.
vehicles touching down range. Airport D, chamber pressure nominal. 